Hi, I'm Paul Osterhaus here, and I'm here to talk today about shop floor automation in Odoo and give an example of some of the stuff that QOC has done with shop floor automation. So I'm from QOC Innovations. I'm a co-founder. Uh, we are a US-based uh, Odoo implementer. Uh, we have uh, four and a half years of experience in Odoo, and we have um, a team of wonderful people that we specialize in manufacturing and distribution implementations of Odoo. Uh, we're based in Wisconsin, uh, in the U.S. Uh, again, our team is, uh, is, 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 is amazing, and we do lots of Odoo implementations and manufacturing and distribution. Our in, in the kind of customers that we serve are all across the U.S. in plastic, injection plastic, plastic uh, molding, um, wood manufacturing, millwork, metal work, um, all sorts of types of manufacturing um, sectors. One of the questions before I get into shop automation, a lot of times I get asked, can Odoo really do manufacturing uh, for large scale, can Odoo really do large scale manufacturing implementations? And my answer to that is yes. Uh, we have customers with hundreds of users, uh, um, thousands if not millions of SKUs in Odoo, and then we're successfully implemented them. So shop floor automation. Uh, I come from manufacturing. Uh, I have a passion for connecting to the shop floor. We've been talking about, in the industry, we've been talking about in the industry 4.0 and connecting to the shop floor and how do we collect that data so that we can make better decisions, whether that's machine monitoring, machine integration, whether that's just data collection, whether we're um, monitoring production or doing quality assurance. How do we improve the data that we collect from the shop floor? Some of the benefits that we get from that real-time data is we get improved inventory records, we get KPIs that we can put in the shop, we get improved accounting, we get all those improvements across production floor uh, scheduling, we get improved quality. Um, the benefits uh, are extreme for manufacturers when we're able to collect that, that type of data. We're seeing in our implementations that we're able to drive shop floor automation for for work order management, for real-time production monitoring, for quality control, inventory management, and maintenance management. And so we're seeing benefits from all those different angles in our Odoo implementations. So what I would like to do is just jump into, we have built, uh, we have what we call an, an I, our own IoT box that we're able to connect to the shop floor and we're able to collect this type of data. So what I like to do is jump in and kind of show an example of that, a real real time example of how we do that, and build an automation with you using one of our uh, our nodes that's in our uh, in our office in the U.S. So this is uh, a robot that we have sitting in our office in the U.S. It is connected to one of our IoT nodes. It has uh, on the table there we have a couple of monetary switches and a laser switch. Uh, these are supposed to simulate uh, different types of auto simple automations. Um, we're able to connect to PLCs, all sorts of different things. We've built a automation uh, um, application in Odoo that interfaces with these IoT boxes. So if I go into this automation, I'm going to create a new automation event. And I'm just going to say, so this is going to be a demo automation, right? I could put a description in there. I'm just going to create a quick event that says, Every 30 seconds, 0.5, I'm going to turn the robot job on. I'm going to turn the robot job on. I'm going to, I'm going to wait uh, just a second before I turn it off. And now I'm going to turn the, the, turn the automation off. So I'm going to save this to the, the node that's at the QLC headquarters, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go back up and show the video of our node, of the node in the, in the robot in the headquarters, and you can see now the robot has been told through that automation to now pick up a sign and to pass it through a laser beam. So that was just one kind of simple example of how we can build an automation right in Odoo, connect it to an IoT box, and have it perform an action. But maybe this laser, I know it's a, 
maybe this laser beam that we have that the, the sign is passing due, we want to record a quantity in Odoo. So if we jump back to our automation, I'm going to create another automation event. And this event's going to be laser count. And on the laser count, I want to report a quantity of, we'll make it really easy, we'll record a quantity of 10 every time we trigger. So this could be counting uh, boxes of potatoes going down a conveyor line. This could be counting whatever we want. We could get that real-time data. I'm going to save this automation. I'm going to go back to the demo. And now we're going to see over on the right-hand side here, we're at 55,327 units. Once we jump through there, we just jumped up. So now we can go back to Odoo and see that count is live in Odoo. So that updated in, man, in a manufacturing job, that quantity now has been updated right here. So again, just a simple way that we can drive uh, simple automations from, the, from Odoo. Um, I also have another, I also have another um, job that, or uh, program in the robot. So I could go into the node automation, go back to our automation, select another, another program, save it, go back in and watch the uh, robot. And so now instead of picking up the sign, it's going to go across and hit a monetary switch. So these are very simple automations, but we find that some of the simple automations are very, very powerful in these manufacturers whether it's just counting product as it's going down a line or it's getting produced. But we could also, in here, we can create, we can connect to PLCs, where every five minutes we collect data, or every two minutes we collect data. Uh, there's lots of options uh, in power that we can do with this. So the thing we, I want to show here is, um, I have a colleague uh, in, our, in our office, and hopefully he joins pretty soon here, uh, he's going to show us how uh, we can pick, pack, and ship without using any of our hands. So he's able to go in, scan items. Uh, he's able to put it on a scale, hit a foot pedal. The item is picked, and then the next order comes right back up. So driving efficiencies in the shop floor is just an example of what he's doing here. So right here, he's just scanning the items, and you can see on the node screen, it's it's incrementing the quantities. He scans the scale, it takes the weight, and he goes on to the next one. So again, a hands-free pick, pack, and ship uh, with an IoT box that allows us to build logic into how we want to build it. So a use case that we've used it. We've used this in a number of places. One place that we, uh, a manufacturer in Minneapolis, uh, we have uh, that has PLC lines that are running plastic extruders. They wanted to collect the data from those plastic extruders around temperature, line speeds, all of that data, and they wanted it collected in part of the manufacturing orders in Odoo and part of the work orders and the jobs that they're producing. And so we were able to go in there connect to the PLCs, grab all that data, and we've been doing this for almost a year now, where every five minutes, we collect all of the data around their, around their operations. And so now they can pick it up and they can look at a particular work order and see the temperature and the line speeds, but they could also look at the work center at a day and look at all the, the, the parameters of their production. So some of the key integrations that we have is uh, to PLCs, uh, we're also connecting to different uh, measuring devices, um, different quality uh, components, barcoding, and then just IoT. I don't anything IoT link, vibration, anything that, and on the IoT link side, we can connect to it. We're able to pull that data. So one of the things we love about this is the trend with AI, right? It's, it's, it's definitely make, it's going to make a huge impact in manufacturing. But the power of what we're doing here is we're able to collect the data so that we can start to make some of those trends. We are 
we're working with customers to be able to collect the data from their shop floor at a very, very granular level so that in the coming months and years, we're able to predict outages, maintenance, all of those things uh, going on. The other side of this is a very simplistic side. We're able to give them very clear dashboards in the shop so they can understand what's going on. When you add the time dimension to production, where instead of at the end of the shift, you get a card turned in or the operator goes over and says how many I produced, when they are able to tell us, I produced one at 8 a.m., 8.15, 8.30, you can start to see the trend and understand where are the constraints and what are the gaps that they need to be solved. So that's what we do at QLC. We specialize in manufacturing and uh, distribution. And I hope you uh, seeing what we're doing here with IoT and some of the stuff from the node perspective is helpful to you. So thank you. Thank you uh, so <laughs> much for your, your talk. Um, they're still writing some questions, so I'm just going to do one that I was interested in. Okay. Um, is it also possible, because now you're talking it in a production kind of overview, uh, would it also be relatable or implementable in any other kind of way that you think? Sure, in inventory for sure. Like uh, any, any kind of warehouse situation, uh, particular could be very useful for this. So inbound inventory, inventory moves, inventory outs. All those can be used for there okay. too. Interesting. And how can you implement your system? How can it, so it's uh, you can buy the the node from us, and then it's just you get the app, and then you can connect whatever devices, and you can kind of build out the automation. We'll help you as you see fit, but we want to have this so that we can extend the uh, the capability of collecting shop data to everybody else too. So, so would you then say it's possible to purchase it on your website? Would you be able to publish it on sure. uh, somewhere else? Okay. Yep, you can, you can come to our website and get information about it. Okay, interesting. And anywhere all over the world or you specify specifically? Right now we're focused in the US. US. Sorry. Canadian market is our kind of the area mm -hmm. that we work. And they also want to know, like, what would the cost be? Uh, can you be open uh, in talking about as well as like... So I know how costs go, and if I say this here, it'll be on a YouTube video, and then it'll be out there forever. So I'd rather <laughs> have you just con uh, connect with me, Ask but him. we have it very Maybe fairly priced so that... Give like a scale. ballpark in between something like this uh, for different types of So projects. the device itself is about a thousand-ish dollars, okay. right? And there's a, a short maintenance agreement uh, that we can a service so that we can get, we can continue and improve the product. Okay, interesting. Yeah. They are wondering, is the tool written in Python? The, uh, the automa where we create the automations, that's all written in Python. The device itself is all written in C. That way we can connect to all sorts of libraries, whether it's quality control components, et cetera. So that's, that's where that's at. Okay. Um, is this an app uh, that you would also do in the App Store? I don't think it will be like a physical device, if I understood correctly. So it's it a physical di device and it's an app. And so we will app. be moving the app to the App Store. And then the device, because you were mentioning it's a sort of IoT box, would mm -hmm. we be able to purchase it through another vendor supplier? Not at this point. Not we haven't point. gone that far. Okay. Uh, maybe at some point, yes. Um, they were wondering, like, what are the measurements that can be taken in English, or is it always a metric? Uh, it can be taken either way. In both? Yep. Perfect. Uh, all data are only in PSQL, uh, if I this is written correctly. PSQL. Yeah. <laughs> the last one. Oh, uh, po I all the data, no, none of the data is stored on the node. All the data is in pushed the in Postgres the database. All the data is pushed in there, so okay. it's all available to you. So when we collect the data, we don't store anything. It's immediately updated and do as we are demonstrating. Okay, yeah, so they're typing Postgres I'm, I'm assuming so. <laughs> <laughs> Full sentences, guys, I don't know. Um, those are it for the questions. Not sure if the audience has still other things to start typing. That would be easy. Um, maybe from my side again, like uh, how many of those have you implemented we have a number of them right now in in production, in environments, right? That's it's, it's growing at a rate. We had paused our kind of rollout for a while because we wanted to get to this version of it. We have been kind of this has been in the works for three years. We've okay. been working on this. This is a kind of a pet project that I've always had is to we the technology's been out there. The components of the technology we just wanted to be able to connect the dots so that we could have 
that end to end in a very streamlined, easy way for people to connect to it. And you produce them yourselves, correct? Uh, the whole device, so it's not externally. It's There's components that we we have other previews. We exactly. can, we assemble it, etc. But you control the R and D and everything. We control the entire stack. How many different types of devices can you connect or control? Oh, that would be a very difficult. Uh, it's almost unlimited in some ways to the types of, I mean, we just need to be able to, I mean, we, we, connect, we can connect to machining centers, we can connect to lasers, brake presses. I mean, there's lots of different things that we can connect to. Uh, we're still, it's growing every day, the components that we can connect to. Uh, so I don't know if I could say how a particular number, but it's definitely growing. Could you maybe give them the limitation of, that of a device that you already know uh, that as of now it's not possible? I haven't found one yet. <laughs> challenge him, guys. Yeah, challenge <laughs> me. <laughs> we haven't found one yet. We'd love okay, to find them. Yeah. They, they will definitely do our yeah, community. Yeah, I'm sure they will. <laughs> uh, how long would you would the lead time be for if I order it today and then they want to have it shipped to them and then maybe also implement uh, if they're on? It's about a month lead time to get one right now, uh, and then once it's shipped to you, like it's gonna, it's it's gonna. I mean, like this example I gave where we went into this facility recently and we we set these up. We, a couple hours, okay. right? It's more of the infrastructure to get it set up and run the yeah. cables, the connection and getting the data to Odoo, okay. that's already done. Okay, cool. And they are wondering if the IoT box is like a custom thing or is it a native? Uh, it's all custom. Always custom. It's custom, yeah. Yep. And so every every project will have a custom IoT? No, sorry. Uh, the app that I showed, you can build your own automation in there. We've built our own custom IoT box okay. so that we can connect to all sorts of different things. Okay, but then every then it would be a generic one where you will have product mm -hmm. development. So maybe I will call it IoT one, IoT two for future reference, and then the app potentially yes. Yep. Okay, do they need to have a subscription for the app? Uh, for the app, yes. There's a subscription with QLC. Late, so yeah. not a one-time purchase. It will no, be a, a subscription, subscription based yeah. thing. Um, any other questions in the audience or at home? the ones because I think then we can round it up. I would All say right. thank you. If not, thank you, you can everybody. just ask him first. Appreciate it.